Hi there. In this game, Bobby Fischer was playing against Herman Pilnick. This is in Santiago round 12. E4 from Fischer. We see Sicilian defense, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, d6, bishop c4, e6. The bishop drops back, bishop e7, both sides castle, bishop e3. And now black, instead of playing for a plan like b5 later, like a6, maybe queen c7, b5, black plays instead bishop d7. This seems to be just wanting to use pieces to put a bit of pressure on the center without using any pawns up, any pawn moves. We see Fisher playing with pawns though, f4. Knight takes d4, bishop takes, and now bishop c6. So black's using pieces. Fisher is ready to use pawns, it seems here. After queen e2, queen a5, f5, trying to exert more influence on this diagonal, trying to break home that diagonal. We see e5, a concession. If e takes, a necessary one it seems, if e takes, rook takes, uh, the dangers of allowing this situation is why it can build up quite easily. For example, this situation crashes through quite viciously. For example, like this, e5 threatening checkmate, it will be a total disaster. Uh, this would be just winning the queen next. So yeah, it's a very, very dangerous situation to play e takes, this build up on the f file. So we have e5. And now the bishop drops back, and we have bishop d8. This seems a little bit on the slow side, again with pieces. And Fisher is actually reinforcing the center control, rook ad1. We see bishop b6. And now he's not actually tempted to take d6. It's just more about the control of key central squares, because he has something else in mind here. Can you guess what Fisher plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. What would you play with white here? Okay. By contrast to the opponent, Fisher is keen to use pawns g4 to smash through things. We see h6 trying to put a break on the dark squares, suppressing g5. But guess what? What does Fisher play here? Five seconds. Pause the video. It's caveman mode. H4. We see knight to h7. And now, in fact, the immediate g5 is possible. It's so strong the position. Fisher played rook d3, which is also strong. The position is so strong, g5 just crashes through. Which is, it makes one feel, okay, no wonder the Royal Pez is so popular. If this is so easy to just melt down. Uh, after rook takes d6 here, for example, and the rook just coming back for the h file, uh, it's very, very difficult to defend these types of positions. For example, like this, it's, it's all over. So a very, very uh, tricky situation where even g5 is, looks crushing. But rook d3 is good as well, king h8, and g5 here anyway. Bishop d4. This is interesting. It's such a strong position for white. It's incredible. If h takes had been played, h takes, knight takes, then check, and the rook just goes to h3. And, you know, black's game mated. So uh, we see this bishop d4, and it is a little bit, it's very, very suspect to black's position here. Uh, Fisher played a move which is not entirely the most accurate, actually, king h2. It's very logical, and it's, it's crushing still. But it's so strong the position, I mean it's worthy of note uh, that uh, in fact rook takes d4 gets an enormous dark square bishop here pointing at g7, you know, threatening like things like f6, g takes. And there's really no defensive measures here. If f6, g, uh, g6, if nothing else, will uh, win material, win that knight, If nothing else and yeah it's it's just an incredibly strong position after bishop takes d4 if h takes f6 here as an example queen h5 bishop takes bishop takes and this is easily mating if queen c7 just to illustrate rook f2 queen g4 so if 
if you're in a similar situation to install a bishop like this, it's actually, to me, very, very aesthetically pleasing. Both bishops are working on these diagonals. And this is such a crushing position. Everything's working towards black's king. And uh, as you might expect, there's not too much black could do here in these scenarios. This is just hopeless. So, and if rook fe8 here... Then f6, bishop takes f7 here, and it's, it's all over. You know, this bishop's just sitting there waiting to be liberated. So, yeah, rook takes d4 seems an enormously powerful exchange sack. But Fisher's move is also, it's so strong the possession. Fisher's move is very strong as well. We see bishop b5. That's taken. A bit of a nuisance. Okay, c3 now, just nudging politely this bishop. Rook takes f2. We see queen b6. Rook g2, and this is very desperate, d5. That's just taken. Rook at ad8. And now the queen comes in. Yeah, it's it's a real brutal game. Uh, queen takes, pins that, um, well, there's going to be g6 if nothing else. And other things, it's not quite a pin. And the queen's protected. But it, it's just crushing. So black played rook takes d5, e takes. I mean, there's also, there's also, for example, friends like f6. So, okay, rook takes his plate, e takes, e4. The rook joins the other one and shields the diagonal. Queen d6, we have h5, avalanching, rook g8. h takes g, opening up some more things to do. f6, big form pawn. Black blunders here with queen takes d5. Well, it's... Not blunders, I mean, kind of mistaken and already hopeless position. But guess what Fisher plays in this position, if I give you five seconds to pull the video. A very neat little finish. White play. Okay, queen takes h7 check, yeah, black resigned here. If king takes rook h3, it's checkmate. Yeah, if... Uh, Instead of queen takes queen c7, um, the game might continue a little bit, but essentially after rook h3 and f7, then it's over on h7, disconnecting queen from h7. So yeah, a really brutal, crushing game, it has to be said. Uh, so key takeaways for me, personally, it shows how black's piece play has a certain uh, feel of legitimacy about it. You know, adult seriousness, responsibility, not trying to move too many pawns and you know swap off strategically the dark square bishop but it all took a, a quite a bit of time and in the meantime Fisher's playing like a caveman in this game with g4 and h4 but it all really is brutal because essentially if you look at this the downside is of all this serious looking play strategic positional play is the king's been neglected over here it's flated, facing the floods it's facing the avalanche and, you know, moves like g5 were possible. It's so strong, white's position in this game. Rook takes d4 was so, was possible. You know, these bishops, especially if you have that bishop without a counterpart, bearing down as well, and then using the g5, it's just, it's all over. But, yeah, it's it's a, it's crushing the way it was played as well. So, yeah, uh, something to behold. Uh, I'll take you to the final game position. So we learned that, uh, yeah, Fisher's uh, Sozin attack, you know, bishop c4 dropping back to b3, he, he often is playing with an avalanche of pawns in mind. Very, very cruel intentions. Okay. Very effective. Crude and effective. Thanks very much. Hi, guys. If you enjoyed this video lecture, you might want to get more at my course, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher, which I had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content. I tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period. I had an absolute blast creating it, and I think you will have an absolute blast checking it out. And it's at a big discount code with this link. You know, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher has the discount code. So I hope you do check that out. Thanks very much.